What is up, everyone? Aviel Easter here with Yappa238.com, and welcome to the Yappa Sock Podcast. It's the podcast where we talk about being young, being apostolic, taking that power and putting it into action. What is up, Yappa fam? I hope your guys' day is going well. I hope your guys' week has been going well. I hope everything you're in your life is going according to God's plans. All right, God's plans, not our plans. I'm sorry, I can't really hope that because I know that God has the best for us. And sometimes we go through dark seasons in life. We go through ups and downs, hills and valleys. We're in, we're out, we're everything about or everywhere about. All right, and and sometimes we feel all stretched. But in those times, we find that God has a purpose and he's working things inside of our lives, things in our hearts, things out of our hearts, right? And so it's a very powerful thing to be in the plan and in the path of God. I'm reminded of uh, the disciples, right? The disciples, when they're on their way over to um, uh, Gadara, yeah, Gadara, and uh, they were crossing the Sea of Galilee, and it was dark, and it was stormy, and, you know, they're thinking, yep, we're going to die. Today is the day. Today is the day that the seas are going to get me. I'm going to drown. I'm going to die because of how rough the waters were, how crazy everything was, right? And it was on that sea that they, they were able to see during that super dark, stormy time in their lives, that season, after they've done everything that Jesus called them to do, right? Jesus asked for them. He said, hey, follow me. And they're going and, and they're, they're uh, moving about with him. They're sleeping under the stars with him. They're, they're, leaning, they're gleaning at his feet. They're sitting down and they're getting as much as they could from Jesus. And he's like, let's go over here. And so they did everything right. They obeyed, okay, in our context, kind of flipping it. Uh, they obeyed their pastor. They, they're submitted to their spiritual authority, their parents and their pastor, the leaders in their lives. They, they had a relationship with God. They prayed. They fasted. They did everything that they were supposed to do. And now they're in a dark season. And in fact, it was, it was like Jesus because of his intention, if you want to look at it this way, they because they're following after Jesus and Jesus' intention, they ended up there. So kind of like how the Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness so that he could be tempted of the devil. It's like the the, the disciples were driven into the middle of the, the the this crazy, dark, and stormy time in their lives, just following after God, following after Jesus. Right? And so it's like it's in those times when everything's going crazy that we see certain victories, just like Jesus saw victory over the three temptations, all right? The disciples saw victory, Jesus, God's victory over the winds and the waves. And they're like, dude, what manner of man is this, that even the, the winds and the seas obey him, right? And they walk with that testimony that is forever etched inside of their hearts. Like that is a powerful, powerful thing. And so, Wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, today may be, you know, you may be on cloud nine today, maybe on cloud three, maybe on cloud negative nine <laughs> today. But as long as you're walking after the spirit of God, walking after the, the in the, in the um, pathway of God, all right, it's going to be, it's going to be okay as long as Jesus is with you, all right? And see the worst, well, anyway, it's going to be okay, all right? It's going to be okay. So anyway, what's up? <laughs> What's up? I hope you guys are doing good. Hope you're doing well, my friend. And um, welcome to today's Yapsalk podcast. And I'm excited about this one because honestly, um, we as young, young people, apostolic, Holy Ghost filled young people doing our best to live for God. All right. There's some things that I see a lot of us uh, uh, reaching for, and especially in like the realm of like the right now, whether you're 14, 17, 21, 32. All right, if you're single and you're uh, doing the will of God, you're or you're doing your best to do the will of God, you're walking in it, you're you're praying, you're you're doing your deal, right? Generally, um, there's there's certain things that we uh, come face to face with, right? That we need uh, the ability to navigate through. And I promise you, in what we're talking or what we're going to be talking about today in today's podcast is going to be by the grace of God and by the help of the Holy Ghost, a roadmap to help us navigate through a lot of the very, uh, the, the deep decisions that we have to make in life. All right. Now it's not going to be the whole thing. 
It's not going to be uh, your your uh, you know your big Google Maps like GPS. Okay, that's Jesus, that's God. But this is going to be a very practical podcast where we talk about the things that help us, or this major thing that's going to help us make life decisions. All right, and if we couple it with God, we'll be in for a life that which I would consider the best life. Right in 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 so many words. The reason why is because you have God on your side. You're doing the will of God. You have eternity to look forward forward to. In fact, the this vapor that we live in called life, this little like as the Bible calls it, a, a vapor. It's like the steam that comes off of your soup when you pour it into your bowl. Just as as quickly as it as it forms, it's gone. All right, that that vapor of a life, that 70, 90, maybe 120 years if you're blessed by God, right, is setting you up for 120 years times 120 years times 120 years times a thousand times a million times a billion. In fact, it's setting you up for eternity. All right. And so the best life that you can have is when you're linked up with Jesus doing exactly what he wants you to do, making as many of the right decisions as possible according to him. And you do that based off of this mega principle that we find in the Word of God that we're going to be talking about today. So without further ado, let's say a quick word of prayer and jump into today's podcast. Holy Ghost, thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your power. God Almighty, we pray, God, that in today's Yapsock podcast that you would minister to our hearts, that you'd help us to see the way you want us to see. And God, I pray that revelation would come that the gifts of the Spirit would be operating, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, and whatever else needs to operate. God, let your Spirit loose in today's podcast. And I pray that uh, the, the the word that goes forth uh, would be go onto fertile soil. And not only that, but your Spirit, God, would linger with us as we think and dwell on these principles that you've given us within the Word of God. Pray all flesh step aside and let your glory shine. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to commit this all to you in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty, my friends, let's jump into today's podcast. All right, so um, uh, as you guys already seen the title, hold on, well, let me get my phone real quick because I have it. Here we go. All right, how to keep, or excuse me, how to get and keep your life on track. So how to get your life on track, how to keep it on track. The way you do it, all right, is by this simple word, one simple word that we all have, it's called a vision, all right? It's called our vision, what we see, okay? And now, the reason why this is super important, okay, first off is because we find uh, uh, within the book of Proverbs, the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish, all right? And that's just uh, one anchor scripture. There's many, many other scriptures that we find talking about vision, people, well, the necessity of a vision. And when people get away from a vision, we tend to get lost in a million different directions. All right. We can also think of vision as like your aim or a target. Okay. You have your, maybe your crossbow or your little bow and arrow and you're shooting at a bullseye. Well, what happens if for whatever reason, the vision that you have or the aim that you have Like uh, for those of you guys in the design world, if you guys go in Photoshop and you add a Gaussian blur to a background, it's going to be super blurry to where you can't really even distinguish what's the the the, what the Gaussian blur is over. So just imagine, you know, um, those of us not in the design field, um, just imagine your eyes getting super super blurry. All right, and everything kind of meshing, all the colors, all the lines go away, all the distinguishing factors, you know, you can't see any noses anymore, you can't see any eyes anymore. And when you're aiming for this um, this target with your bow and arrow, everything becomes blurry to where it's pr- pretty much just like four or five, six different colors. All right, the likelihood of you actually hitting that target in motion, in action, while you're moving through your life, all right, in motion, in action, is very, very, very slim. In fact, you're probably aim, fire, shoot, and you're going to land off. The likelihood, it's like a needle in a haystack type odds that you're going to hit spot on where you need to hit if you don't have a clear vision. Now, by the grace of God, God has given us the ability to mine that vision out, to look through our flesh, 
look through our desires, look through the things that we want as human beings and get to the core of the vision that God has for us. All right, so vision is a very, 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 very big thing. Okay, and now how, how, now when I say it helps us get our life, our life on track, um, what do I mean by that? Okay, well, I remember when I kind of first started toying with this idea of having a vision, it was, uh, it was with the help of my dad. And when I was younger, you know, being 11, 12, 13, 14, um, which is, 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 is powerful, actually, um, my dad was embracing and fulfilling scripture in that he, the Bible says to train up a child in the way that he should go. All right. He being, you know, him, her, you know, the, the kid, train up the child. Right. And so my dad was actively involved in training us up and uh, very actively and purposefully. Okay. And so at 11, 12, 13, by the grace of God, I'm, I'm, and, you know, by the help of my dad, I'm getting these messages of, you're called to do something. All right. You're called to do something. And I want to kind of stop here real quick, kind of post up, set up camp just real quick. Okay. Here's the deal is that by the grace of God, I was getting that message when I was, when I was younger, you're called to do something. God has an individual purpose for you, not you as in you as the human race or you as everyone in, uh, you know, North America or South America or wherever you're listening to this over across the pond uh, in Europe, not, not you just in general, but you specifically, your insert first name, insert first name, insert last name. All right. Put your social security number in there. Put the little face ID, eye scanner deal on there. Okay, you, <laughs> as an individual, are called to do something by God. Okay, and I, I remember like hearing that my dad saying, "You got to, you know, you're called. You're called. You do something. You need." And you know, him embracing and uh, really living out that scripture of train up a child. He's giving us and pushing inside of us, like in my. DNA psyche. God has something for you and and you're you're called. And so I'm getting these messages and not everyone gets the me- that message even though it's truth no matter who you are there's 7. Point something billion people on this earth and if all of us turn to God and follow after his way all right there'll be something individualistic that God gives them. All right? Uh but uh, but not everyone hears that in the, you know, even in honestly the apostolic movement in in general, or sometimes we think, oh, that's that's great, that's for my neighbor, or oh, that's great, that's for my friend, that's for the person sitting uh, a couple rows back from me, that's for the another kid, you know, another, you know, that's for the PKs, that's for uh, you know the the evangelist child, and that's for you know da 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 missionaries kids and stuff, and no and 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 no, um, you know, I'm not trying to say anything like that uh, in a negative connotation, um, but sometimes you know PKs need to hear that same thing too. All right, you're called for an individual, like your thumbprint, okay, that thing, like I said, your eye print, your face print, whatever, all like the prints, the DNA, the way you're, I don't know what DNA stands for, like the whole du- deoxynucleic acid. Okay, your DNA, the way that stuff's structured, okay, just like God created that for you, He has a specific individual purpose for you, no matter who you are. So, no matter who you are. Okay, PKs included, and anybody, anybody who has a breath in their nose, all right, <laughs> they're called of God. And so you need to hear that because that's the truth, all right? Every, everybody needs to not only hear that, but, get, but begin to embrace it, okay? Because that's honestly the first step in having that God vision, that vision that God gives you and walking in that path, all right? And especially in these last days, we need young people who are embracing God's individual purpose for them. All right. When the book of Acts was written, there was no book of Acts to like to like reference. All right. When the book of Acts was written, there was no book of Acts to reference. What do they do? They went to the Spirit of God. They went, they prayed, they fasted, they were in one accord. They had a relationship with Jesus, and Jesus gave them instruction on how to do it. Here we go. Okay. So Jesus gave him instruction on what to do. But a lot of us are caught in this mode, this mode, this modality of normal 
what well, normal churchism, I guess you would say, where we, you know, the three songs, the the uh, the offering, you know, clap. Okay, you know how to clap on beat. You know how to, you know, you're involved in this, you're involved in that, but you know for a fact that you're not doing the exact thing that God wants you to do. And here's the deal. You may not know what that exact thing is, but you know you're not doing it. You know that there's like a gap between where you are right now and where God wants you to be. You don't know where God wants you to be, but you know there's a gap. See, and what happens is uh, we can find ourselves in that place. And when we find ourselves in that place, what do we do? We follow the book of Acts model. All right, what do they do in the book of Acts? God, what do you want us to do? God, we're, we're yours. We're servants. We're slaves to Christ. We are yours, God. What do you want us to do? Oh, get up. Go to Samaria. Okay. Or, hey, Peter, let me ask you a question. All right? Is this, is this, uh, it, it, can you, it, or rise and eat. Stand up. Get up. Eat this thing. No, God, that's okay. All right? You know, so, so th- then Jesus starts becoming real to us. All right, real to us. And if we want that latter rain book of Acts stuff, okay, it's 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 gonna be greater than the the um uh the former rain. Okay, so it's gonna be seven times greater. And so if the the end time harvest is gonna be at the very least seven times greater than what we find in the first, the 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 former harvest, the the before, you know, souls and stuff like that. If it's going to be seven times greater, it needs to be seven times greater of what it already is. All right? One times seven is going to be seven. All right? But if you begin to change one and you begin to manipulate one, you begin to alter one, well, then how could it be seven times greater if it was changed, if it was altered, if it was manipulated, if it was something else? All right? So what should we be doing? We should be getting involved with Jesus on a belly-to-belly personal level where you know the voice of God, you have a relationship with God, and not this, like, uh, you guys hear me, almost every week I've been been mentioning TikTok preachers, but anyway, not the TikTok, (laughs) not the TikTok preacher, like, oh, yes, you know, you have a relationship with God if you, and then quote some, you know, ESV devotional excerpt from so-and-so. All right, that's half Bible, half motivational talk or ins- inspo, you know, uh, half half Pinterest inspo, okay? So it's like not that type of stuff. I'm talking about relationship with God where you can go to God and say, hey, God, I have an issue, I have a problem, can you show up? Or have a relationship with God where he fills you with his spirit as you come into him. Or have a relationship with God where he can move through you as a vessel for him. And you begin to operate in the gifts and the power of the Spirit. Those things are available for us today if we have that belly-to-belly relationship where God's all up in your grill and you're like all up in God's grill. (laughs) All right, so we all have our individual call, an individual path that we're supposed to be following. All right, and so though I heard it when I was younger, and that was one of the main reasons why, well, that and many other things that my dad did uh, that Yapa is here, here today. Um, and then I've embraced the call of God to do, you know, online ministry. And we've, by that, by the grace of God, we've impacted, we've taught, uh, we've met a lot of people. All right. We have people, you know, about, um, they're talking about committing suicide to, you know, their struggles with homosexuality, you know, um, the uh, fornication, whatever it was, like just different things. They brought uh, uh, these testimonies to me saying that, the Yappa 238 helped them out of that, all right, or helped them during their struggles, helped them, et cetera, et cetera. So God knew what he was doing. And um, by the grace of God, you know, being belly to belly Jesus, he'll give you things. He'll give you a layout. He'll give you a plan. Okay, this is what you do. This is what I want you to do, et cetera, et cetera. But we all have that individual call, okay, that individual purposeful call of God. Now, now, okay, so we get it, okay? Um, I hope right now we all get it. We have an individual purposeful call that God has for us. Now, going back to the subject and the theme of today's podcast is having a vision. That means we actually have to get to the place where we see that. And one of the things I like to distinguish 
off the jump is that there's a difference between a God-given vision for your life and a man-made vision of your life. The man-made vision deal of your life, that's easy. You can say, I want a million dollars. You can say, I want, you know, the the, the hottest girl on, on the block. You can say, I want the dude who's just mm, 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 good, like Hollywood actor status, you know. You can say that you can create this vision in your own head, right, of the, the mansion with the kids. Or maybe that's not your deal. Maybe it's, you know, the jet-setting life where you're traveling to every single country there is and, and experiencing different cultures and stuff. And there's nothing wrong with any of that stuff, I don't think. Maybe the whole Hollywood template stuff like that. I have issues with that. But anyway, uh, you know, it's not, there's nothing wrong with having, you know, uh, uh, someone that you're attracted to as a, as a spouse. All right. I think that's a necessity. But um, just that using Hollywood as a template. Okay. Like I, I got issues there. But anyway, so, um, <laughs> uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with, with wanting any of those things. All right. But the, the, the problem lies when you become born again. <laughs> All right, and you're born again, and now you're in relationship with a with a with a groom, with Jesus, the one that you're married to. That says, "Hey, wait a second, my, I don't roll that way." All right, you're not you're not you need a a local assembly. I want you to come back to. You need a body of believers that I want you to be accountable to. You can't just go jet set. Now, listen, I'm not giving anybody no type of word or anything like that. I'm just, follow me now. But, or, you know, yeah, you know, you can, you can, you have the potential, you have the people skills to go ahead and make all kinds of money, you know, a million dollars every single year, hundred or $80,000 a month. You have that potential inside of you, but I want to take that. And I want to use it for my kingdom so you can have a million soul impact rather than a million dollar impact. A million soul impact that'll last a lifetime rather than a million dollar impact that'll last for this year and then the year next and the year next. Now, again, I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with wealth. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong. All right. But what I'm saying is that sometimes, and I'm sure we all kind of figured this out about Jesus so far, is that our vision will kind of will kind of not really be aligned with his vision. Can I get a witness? <laughs> I know I have. <laughs> I'm the dude who did a two-hour podcast about the relationships I was in before that I surely thought I was going to be in prophetic word, a prophet in the dream, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The other one, I prayed for her, I asked for her, and I had a spiritual encounter, all these different things, right? So I'm that guy saying that your vision Okay, what you want may be a little bit different than what Jesus wants, okay? And so that's the reality and that's the truth. Now, if I would now let's say if I if I ran away, you know, for those of you guys who did listen to that podcast, podcast, if you if if you or I ran uh, run away with this idea that you made in your head, could you make it work according to the standard of the world? Maybe. That's a possibility. You can make the money, maybe. You can have the, the the spouse, maybe. All right. You can you can have a marriage with two beautiful kids and and all that great stuff, yeah. But that's a that's according to the word standard. And see, the problem lies is when we service after service, conference after conference, we sing those songs of surrender. I surrender all to you. And then we put we put we we add uh, insult to injury. Say everything I give to you, and then we just we just absolutely kill it. We just put it withholding nothing, <laughs> withholding nothing. And then you say it twice. It's like what? <laughs> okay, why is that an issue? Well, what happens if you're withholding something? What what happens when you you sing I give myself away? but you kind of keep about 80% of yourself back. Well, God, I can't, I can't do that whole, the, all, the whole thing, God. I still have to go hang out with my friends. I can't do the, like the, the one hour every evening of prayer, God. But like after you service, we all go hang out at so-and-so. So I can't diss my friends, God. You know what I'm saying? I give 80% of myself to you. 
Almost all of me, I get to you. That's how we should be singing. <laughs> Actually, we shouldn't be singing it that way. That's how we mean it, though. Sometimes, all right. And it's it's a hard deal. And I'm not I'm I'm joking, but I'm but it it, it is actually a hard deal to um, submit a hundred percent of yourself and keep yourself on the altar. But that's what the altar is for. That's what the cross is for. That's what dead flesh and all the praying that you do and all the fasting that you do, all the consecration to God, all the abstaining. No, I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to hear that. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to think that. I'm not going to, like, that's what all that's for, all right? And so I'm not saying it's easy, but it is kind of funny that we do that. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure I fall under that category of doing that. So God's gracious. But, um, but, we have the conflict of visions oftentimes. We have our vision, our way, the thing that we want to do. We have God's vision, God's way, the thing that he wants to do. And he's telling us, inviting us, okay? He's not forcing us. He's not grabbing us by the neck and saying, no, get over here. You got to do. No, he's just saying, hey, I got this. I got this for you. How about you come do it my way? Very nicely, very gentlemanly. He's like, hey, come over. Let's, let's work my way. Now, that presents a problem because oftentimes we want it to be easy. And maybe it would be easy if God grabbed us and said, no, you're going to do that. All right? Maybe it would be easier that way. But oftentimes when we look for the easy road and we look for, hey, let's let's make it easy, um, that's more so our vision. Because we want God's vision. We want the end result of what God can provide. Oh, yes, most definitely. We just don't want the A to Z, the A to Z experience to get to where he's he wants us to go. So what I mean by by that is like, oh yeah, like people people talk about being like Job, like you know I want double for my trouble. It's like dude, I don't want to be like Job. I don't want to go through what Job went through. Okay, a lot of people want want to be a second in command of of the richest nation in the world at the time, but no one wants to have their brothers lie on them, throw them in a pit. Think about killing him, actually. All right. Then he's he's uh, uh, scrubbing floors at some dude's house he never even seen before. He never. And then he's down in the pit because his wife came at him, and he just kept living for God. And there's a whole bunch of hell that broke loose because of that. So then he's in the pit, and then all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. After 17 years, he's on top of the world. No one wants the 17 years. They just want the on top of the world part. All right. See a com- a confliction in vision. All right. So. Okay, what we have to do is we have to submit ourselves to God. We have to submit ourselves to God to grab hold of his vision. And when we get hold of his vision, or at least set our face to his vision, okay, because God oftentimes won't reveal everything. He'll just invite you. And then when you get there, he's like, oh, let me show you this. And then when you get to there, he, or he shows you that, then he's like, oh, let me show you this and that. And he, this long journey, um, because, yeah, very few things are like, straight and easy and like, oh, it's just A to B and that's it, right? God often lets you walk with him by faith, meaning that you step out on a limb and he comes through. You step out another limb, he comes through. All right. So with that being said, we have um, a, a need to go after the vision that God has for us, or at least put our face in that direction until he gives us the vision. All right. But what young people do is, and you can, you know, you, you guys can uh, probably attest to this, is that we put limiters on God. Okay? How many of you guys limited God before? Have you ever limited God? See, I can see some honest folk in the, in the house way back there, back row. <laughs> anyway, some, I, I, but People, a lot of people say, no, I haven't limited God. God can do anything. That's true, okay? But how many times have we limited God by f- putting a limit on what he can do through us? God wants to make you a uh, 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 number one premier evangelist. God can't do that. I didn't come from no pedigree. God can't do that. I don't know. All I do is read the Bible. I don't have, I'm from a no-name church. I'm from this and all these excuses. Gideon. And I'm not saying it in a rude way. I'm saying it in a way that 
<laughs> it's funny because like humans do that. All right. So our humans can do it. All right. So we, we limit God and what he can do through us. Oh God, I can't, I can't lay my hands on like 9,000 people. See him healed by the power of the Holy ghost. I don't know if I can step in front of 30,000 people and deliver a message from God without caring what they thought through and through. I don't know if I can see, you know, 50,000 receive the Holy Ghost, God, in one service. And you're talking, God, you're talking about like when I'm 21, I'm 13 right now. I don't know. How am I going to get there? All right. So we put these limitations on God. And if he's merciful, he'll help us. He'll work. Through, through those limitations, all right? But we have to, or it'll be wise for us not to get in the habit of limiting God in any way, shape, or form, even when it comes to things that he can do through you, all right? And, and that's not an easy deal. And we're going to cover some tricks that we use here on Yappa to help kind of get our minds going as to what God can do through us, but that's not an easy deal. Again, God's calling you to, you, you feel the call to greater, but, you know, and, and someone's prophesied something over you and you're like, dude, what? I don't think I can do that. It's like, was he, was he, was he just thinking, what was he thinking? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the people, we do that, man. All right. Kind of similar to Gideon. And then God has to prove to us that he, yeah, and this is what I actually want you to do. All right. And so before, before we like stay you know, jump in, in the quicksand uh, of, uh, or in the deep mire of where Gideon was, where he, he was like so stuck in this way of like, dude, I don't know if God can through me. I'm the least of the least of the least, right? I'm the least in my father's house. He's a, my father's house is the least in, in Benjamin. I think it was Benjamin, All right? And Benjamin was the last little kid born, okay? So I'm way down there. But God want, wanted to prove through us through that story that he can take whomever, whenever, it's, it's, it's about him, more about God's power, because God gets the glory out of it, all right? So, and then what testimony would you have? You didn't have any pedigree, you didn't have a background, you didn't have this and that. Everything that man would say, yeah, you need that in order to get to X, Y, Z, and God brings you up. What kind, who gets the glory? Does the pedigree get the glory? Does the, the lineage get the glory? Does Who gets the glory? No, if God brings you and does something miraculous, literally performs a miracle in your life over 20, 30 years of your life, or maybe 5, 10, 3, 1 year of your life, if God does it, who gets the glory? God does. All right, and there's a book that told me that he likes getting glory. It was like one of the, the, the love languages books about God. All right, he likes getting glory, so give him glory. All right, so... Anyway, we have to get our, our, our feet out of the thick, uh, destructive mud of, uh, of not thinking that God can move through us in any way, shape, or form. So I want you guys to perform an exercise with me. If you're, st- if you're sitting down, stand up, stretch, get a big, good stretch in. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I really stretched. Okay, so um, if you guys are sitting down and you guys are, like, driving, don't try to stand up. You may, like, uh, hit the gas and then you know, womb, womb away, but, uh, <laughs> whatever you're doing. All right. I want you guys to participate in this. Um, I know, I know, I know apostolic young people. Sometimes you're, you're out in public and there's a lot of people around and you don't want to participate like that. I get it. I get it. So just for you, we'll accommodate you. Okay. All I want you to do is, is, is like close your eyes just a little bit. Pretend, pr- pretend like you're sleeping. Just like, <sighs> okay. All right. So close your eyes. Okay. And this is uh, what TOTD we did way back ago. All right, but I want to bring it back. Okay, imagine that call that God has for your life. Imagine that call. Okay, maybe it's a call to the ministry. Maybe it's a call to entrepreneurship. Maybe it's a call to ministering, not just the ministry, but to ministering in new and creative ways, whatever that call is. And if you don't know what that call is, remember how we said, you know, point your face in that direction. You know that there's there's something more that you can do. You know there's something inside of you that says, no, I can do more. And let's put away, it's just you and God right now. And me, I'm talking, but um, I'm not here. I'm not seeing you. Okay, so go ahead right now and start putting away those insecurities 
Okay, start putting them in the back burner. I know that. I, I, I know we got some, especially if we've been through a lot. All right, so go ahead and start putting those insecurities to the back burner. All the questions, all that stuff, just put it to the back burner. Loose yourself. All right, loose yourself, okay? So now what I want you to do is I want you to think about that call and you living in it. Live in that call. Imagine yourself in that call right now. Imagine yourself in that ministry position. Imagine yourself with that business. Imagine yourself ministering to the lost, the broken, the hurting, whatever the call is. Imagine yourself investing into the kingdom of God, investing your time, your spirit, your soul, everything about you. Okay, really get there. All right? Now, I want you to put God in the mix of it. In the sense of his infinite capabilities or his infinite capacity. Remember, with one word, he created billions, possibly trillions of stars that are hundreds of times larger than the earth itself from his one word. All right, so what I want you to do is introduce him and imagine him 100xing or 100 times ing what you're doing right then and there. So that ministry that you're a part of, you maybe you saw yourself standing in the pulpit in front of a group of 2,000 people. Okay, imagine 200,000 people. All right? Maybe you saw, you know, yourself making a hundred and you know twenty thousand dollars a year in your business, and you giving checks out for a thousand dollars to missions work, and you know maybe uh, five hundred dollars here, six hundred dollars there. Okay, I want you to hundred x that. Okay, so instead of a thousand dollars you're giving, you're giving a hundred thousand dollars. Instead of making a hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year, you're making well, that's a lot of money. What is that? $10 million? <laughs> 100x it. You're making, you make, wait, 120,000. I meant a month. All right. So, um, anyway, and then you're making 100, no, 10, yeah, 10 million. And you're making $100 million a year. Wow. That's a lot of money. Okay. So imagine, but imagine God doing it for you, though. Not you, but God doing it. Imagine you impacting not just, 10 souls, not just feeding a hundred empty mouths or empty stomachs. Imagine you doing a hundred times that, whatever it is. You produce uh, apostolic Holy Ghost filled music. Instead of a thousand people listening to it, what about a hundred thousand? Instead of a hundred thousand, what about, uh, I think that's what, close to a hundred million? No, no, it's like a, a billion, I think. Anyway, math wasn't my strongest subject in school. <laughs> okay, so back to our little thing. So um, ima- imagine that, okay? Now, stay out there, stay out there. Don't start, oh, this is kind of weird. This is No, I don't think I could do that. That's, and this is what's happening probably right now. Okay, some, some of you guys are thinking, oh, that, that sounds good, Avil, but I'm, I'm fearful. Why are you fearful? And the fear, the fearfulness is manifesting itself as in, dude, I don't know if I can do that. I can't do that. Why would God do that through me? How is God going to do that through me? He can do it through someone else. I, I will never see those things. That's how, that's what the deep below, that's fear. You know, God didn't give us that spirit. God didn't give us the spirit of fear. So don't be fearful which means silence those voices. And just imagine, just to think about it. Listen, if God doesn't want it for you, all you do is imagine it. And you imagine him doing it. But if God wants it for you, well, brother, sister, that's a different story. All right, that's a different story. Okay, so now 100x. 
okay, the people that you minister to, the income that you make to give to the kingdom of God, because you better not take all that stuff for yourself, <laughs> okay, because that's, you don't, yeah, anyway, uh, that, you know, imagine all those things, okay, and then ask yourself this question, this is the question I'll pose to you, is that possible? Is it possible? Not, is it possible for you? That's not what I said. Is it possible? Three words. Is it possible? Four words. Can God do it? If God can do it and it is possible, if you answered yes to both of those things, okay, why can't it be you? Not based off of your excuses or your oh, reasons why. Not based off of your reasons why. But could God do that through you? If God can do it through you, if he can do anything, if he can do it through you, well, Evil, you don't know my past. You don't know my... Well, listen, it's under the blood anyway. If God can do it through you, okay, is there anything wrong with you believing that he can do it through you? So if God can do it, and if God can do it through you, which that is an emphatic yes, is there is there anything wrong with him doing it through you? No. So keep your mind stretched out for a second. While my chair squeaks. Keep your mind stretched out for a second, okay? Just think about that. My challenge to you would be, oh God, people get in trouble with it. <laughs> All right, pray that God's will is done. All right, but my, I would say this, this is not, I'm not telling you what to do, but this is what I would do with my mind stretched out that far. Is I say, God, whatever your will is, let your will be done. And I'll pray that prayer with a tone of, if this is where you want me to go, God, I will go here. I'm not going to let fear bind me. God didn't give us that spirit. Don't let spirits bind you. God didn't give us a spirit of fear. Don't let spirits bind you. So God, I'm not going to let this this I'm not going to let this bind me. If you want to take me there, let's go. So for just so you guys know that I'm participating in this. All right, for Yappa, right now we have about 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. If we were to 100 exit, that's a million. All right? A million subscribers on YouTube. Could Yappa do it? The question is, not can Yappa do it? The question is, can God do it? Can God bring a YouTube channel to a million subscribers? Yes, he can. All righty then. God can do it. Right now on social or on Instagram, we're at 10,000 subscribers. If we 100 x it, that'll be boom. A million, no, not subscribers, followers on Instagram. That's what the, they call it on, on Instagram. All right. So, yeah. All right. So what if, um, you know, for the FSC, all right, we have, what, 20-something uh, people so far? Or, or, no, 50, sorry. Sorry, guys. Sorry, FSC. All right, 50. And if we were to 100 exit, that's 5,000, 500 young apostolics learning how to pray, learning how to fast, learning the call of God for their lives and how to find it, how to walk in it, learning how to date the God-fearing way, learning how to do life and adulting properly, learning how to, to, to manage their finances where it would be pleasing to God, learning how to everything else that we teach in the FSC. All right, so that's what I'm looking at. Can God do it? It's not can I do it. It's not can, can uh, uh, anyone else do it. It's God, can God do it. Yes, God can do it. So if God can do it, Let him do it through you. <laughs> if his is, if it's his, if it's his purpose and his will, let him do it through you. Don't don't try don't pass on that vision. See that vision that you just had that mental mind image that you had in your head that is unique to you. If you try to give it to someone else, it'll die in the grave with you because they, that's not their vision. That's not what God called them to do. All right, what's the call of God for your life? I don't know. But think that way once you get it. 
once you have it in your hand, it wasn't until I was about 19 that I got the, the Yappa 238, right? And now I plug these, this 100X idea inside of it. All right, I plug it in and I'm like, dude, God, you can do it. See, notice I say I can't do it or I, I, I can do it. I don't think I can do it. I don't know. <laughs> I actually, there's a lot of me <laughs> that's saying that I can't do it. All right. By myself. That's what I'm saying. But with God, I'm like, God, okay, you could do it. I'm I'm a I'm a obey. I'm a pray. I'm a fast. I'm a walk your way. I'm a obey. But God, I need you to do it. <laughs> Cause you can do everything. <laughs> you can do anything. I need you to do it, God. I can't do it by myself. Get okay? just like Noah built the ark. All right. And so man does have a. We have a responsibility to birth that vision. But notice it came by the instruction of God. So when we link up with God's instruction, that's good. That's a good thing. Cause then we execute on it, and who gets the glory? God gets the glory because he saved eight people alive and all the animals. All right, that were on the boat. <clears throat> Sorry, he didn't say the dinosaurs, but anyway, so. Um, <laughs> all right, so 100 exit. Keep your mind stretched. Ask yourself, can God do that thing? And if you have to remove yourself from it, detach yourself from it, like, okay, can God do that thing just for anybody? If he can, okay, cool. But that vision that you just had, that's your vision. It came up in your head, in no one else's head, did that thing, was that thing formulated? So now you take it back to yourself. You say, okay, can God do that through me? Yes, he can. He can give me the instruction to build an ark. He can't, he can't, don't limit God. If there was ever a time to limit God, it was never. All right? So don't limit God. (laughs) Real talk. Don't limit God. Let him do whatever he's going to do through you. Okay, now let's let's wrap up this thought about vision. And um, you need prayer. You need fasting. You need consecration of God. You need that. It's an absolute must. Why is it an absolute must? There are so many things that prayer remedies Prayer remedy, stress, remedy, it's spiritual warfare. Like, like it's, okay, whole bunch of things, all right? But one of the reasons why, we talk about prayer so much on Yappa. Okay, you, we need prayer and fasting. But one of the reasons why you need prayer is so that you can get God's vision. Because God God can be talking, but if you're not listening, that's like, that's like him picking up. Like, if he had a message, all right, on his phone, and he called you, and you didn't answer the phone, prayer is answering the phone. Remember, prayer is communication with God. So, and you're not answering the phone. Are you ever going to get the message? He could be trying to say, hurry up. I, I need you. I got this, this great blessing that I want to pour out on someone. I want to give this great idea to someone. But, but because you're not answering, you're not in prayer, purposefully praying. We, we can't afford not to pray. Okay? I don't have time to pray. No, you don't have time not to pray. So when God, God can be trying to get this. So we need prayer. We need fasting. We need a relationship with him. May, are you going to get it the first time you pray? Maybe not. I don't, I, I, you could. All right. I didn't. All right. But prayer isn't about things. Prayer is about relationship. And when you have that relationship with God, at some point in time, he's going to say, okay, this is what I want you to do. This is where I want you to go. This is how I want you to do it. Go ahead. Do X, Y, and Z. All right. And so, that's how how or that's what you where you need to be. You need to be in that position where God can can give that to you. So you need to pray, you need to fast, you need to have good relationship with your spiritual authority. That's your parents and your pastor. All right, your pastor's wife as well. Youth leaders like don't have aught with your brothers. Don't be divisive. Don't be gossiping. Don't be separating the youth group. Don't be you know fornicating, doing stuff like that that you you know you're not supposed to be doing. Don't don't be stressing your mom and dad out unnecessarily. All right, because young people have a have a, a way of <laughs> of doing that. All right, don't don't like be respectful. Honor them. If you're honoring them, you're respecting them. You're giving them, you know, uh, uh, the honor that they're due. All right, it's God's going to have a clear clear path to you, and he and he will communicate with you. All right, so um, 
you know, and I don't, I don't understand their situations. You know, maybe parents aren't in church, et cetera, et cetera. All right, but still show them respect. Okay, you abide by the word of God above it all. All right, but for those of uh, for those of us who are not in that situ- in that situation, we have our parents in church. Honor them, respect them. All right, how do you honor them? Obey. All right, which that's that's a whole podcast topic in itself. Even if it's not, you know, even if you're, if you're not understanding, you're not seeing eye to eye, et cetera, et cetera. Just just listen. That if they have a proven track record that they love you, trying to do the best for you, if they have a proven, like, come on, man, obey the Bible, okay? Because uh, it's not going to be, it's not gonna, God's going to make. You need to get that all that stuff straight, all right? Before you're you're you know you're talking about you know standing up behind a hundred thousand <laughs> people or, or two hundred thousand people at a conference. All right, so um, can God do it? Yes, he can. Can God do it through you? Yes, he can. Embrace it, all right? Pray, have a relationship with God. Obey your spiritual authority. Be submitted, stay submitted. I believe, I believe we live in a generation that not only needs to hear the message of submission, but also I believe we live in a generation that there's those of us out there purposefully practicing submission. So it's a necessary thing. All right. But at the end of the day, if you want to get your life on track, if you want to keep your life on track, have a vision and have God's vision for you. I made it to 24 without with only one significant relationship. All right. But single, you know. And how did I do it? I did it because I kept going back to the vision that God gave me. I kept going back to what, what, what you know, submitting myself, submitting. And it wasn't, it wasn't an easy road. You guys heard the podcast, okay? <laughs> but it wasn't easy. But by the grace of God, by the mercies of God, and by purposefully going back to the vision, okay, what, what is it that I'm looking for? My vision for my life is that I, I do everything God tells me to do. My vision for my life is I do everything God called me to do. All right? And if right now he's not calling me to a relationship, no, I'm not going to do it. No, I'm not going to involve myself in it. And then, you know, that is what steers the ship of my life. That's what I do my best to do. What did God call me to do? What it, and staying on track and on course with that. All right, so my friends, this has been Avil Easter with the Yavsock Podcast. If you guys want to find out how to pray, find out all the tips, the tricks, the strategies for prayers and fasting, join the Firestarter community. You can go to prayerandfastingmasterclass.com. Join the Firestarter community. Not only do you get the Prayer and Fasting Masterclass, but you also get the Call Masterclass and the Godly Dating Masterclass when you sign up just for the prayer and fasting masterclass. That's how we're doing things over here it in or at the FSC. Alrighty, my friends, uh, do what God called you to do. Be blessed. Oh, subscribe to Yap238, wherever we're at. If you're listening to this on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, wherever you're listening to Apple Podcasts, wherever you're listening to it, subscribe. Alrighty, my friends, and I believe that's it. You guys, be apostolic above all above all stay apostolic wait let me try that again be yavasolic <laughs> above all above all be apostolic and i catch you guys in the next podcast god bless in jesus name <laughs>